Hi, I'm Charlie White, the Nutrient Management Extension Specialist at Penn State. In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the Version 5 Nutrient Balance Sheet Excel Spreadsheet Tool. This video is aimed at planners and reviewers who are familiar with how Version 4 of the Nutrient Balance Sheet Excel Spreadsheet functioned. There are several major changes to how Version 5 operates that you need to be aware of. Despite these changes, which we will discuss in a minute, much of the spreadsheet layout and data entry procedures are similar to version 4. One of the changes that we've made in version 5 is to create a separate data input sheet for option 3 balance sheets. Option 3 is used for fields planned with the p-index, where fields must be planned on a field-by-field -field basis using the appropriate transport and source factor scores for each field. Once individual fields are planned in the p-index, it's possible that several fields could be grouped together if nutrient management on those fields will be identical. We call this process of grouping fields that will have similar nutrient management practices post-grouping. Post-group fields will appear as consolidated groups of multiple fields in the nutrient balance sheet summary table, greatly simplifying the summary table that is given to farmers to guide their nutrient applications. Meanwhile, balance sheets for individual fields planned under option 3 will still be printed out for reviewers to inspect. A printout of the p-index scoring for each field planned in option 3 will also be available for reviewers. This new approach to postgrouping allows planners to comply with requirements to run the p-index on a field-by-field -field basis while significantly simplifying the summary tables given to farmers. Option 1 and 2 balance sheets are still developed in the same way as the version 4 spreadsheet. In the input sheet for options 1 and 2, multiple fields can be planned together as a single crop group. Option 1 is used for developing balance sheets with phosphorus balanced nutrient application rates, while option 2 is for developing nitrogen balanced nutrient application rates. The one significant change in version 5 is that under option 1 balance sheets, the P banking option has been removed. P-Banking allowed for planning a phosphorus balanced nutrient application rate based on up to three years of crop phosphorus removals. The P-Banking provision has been retired by the State Conservation Commission and is no longer available in version 5 of the spreadsheet tool. With that introduction to the changes in version 5, let's go ahead and take a look at the new spreadsheet format. When you open the nutrient balance sheet spreadsheet, the first page you'll see is the Nutrient Balance Sheet Index. On this index page, you can use any of these hyperlinks to jump to any of the tabs quickly in the Balance Sheet Spreadsheet. The next page are some basic instructions on how to use the balance sheets. On the third tab, we have contact information for the spreadsheet developers and members of the Nutrient Management Education Program and Workgroup. The next tab is an input sheet for the Nutrient Balance Sheet cover page. The next tab is where you would enter your manure group information. This tab is very similar to the version 4 of the spreadsheet. Each row in this input sheet would be for a different manure type. You need to give the manure type a unique name, enter information about the lab, the, and the analysis of the manure. On the next page, you create a farm crop list. In this page, you use drop-down menus to choose different crop groups and then enter those specific crops into the input sheet. This will allow these crops to be utilized when developing the balance sheets in, addition, in further input sheets. The next tab is the input sheet for options one and option two. In options one and two, you can use crop groups that include multiple fields. Each row in the input sheet corresponds to one crop group for example, here in the first row, we have a corn grain crop group that will be planned for fields 1, 2, and 3 of this farm. We have chosen option 1 as the phosphorus removal option to develop this plan. We enter the crop, the crop yield, and additional information throughout the input sheet. The next input sheet is the input sheet used for option 3, the p-index. In this input sheet, you must plan fields on a field-by-field on a -field basis. Each row should correspond to only one field. Here you can see individual field IDs listed in each row. The next column, the crop group column, 
can be used to identify different crop group scenarios. For example, here we have CG for corn grain. There's no guarantee that each field listed under the crop group CG will be added to a post group together. It depends on the management. However, fields with different names for crop groups will always be separated into different post group scenarios. In this input sheet, we continue on by entering the Mellet 3 soil test level. Any Part A questions or run Part B voluntarily. You enter the crop, including whether it's a double crop, the crop yield, any soil test recommendations if you have them, starter fertilizer, including the starter fertilizer application method if applicable, residual manure credits and carryover legume credits. Then we select the manure group that will be used. We enter the planned application season and the application management as well as the p-index manure application method. If necessary you can add multiple manure applications to the same field. After these inputs are entered you will see a nitrogen balanced and phosphorus balanced manure rate entered here. We need to add additional information about the p-index. If there's any supplemental fertilizer to be added, it can be added here, as well as the p-index supplemental fertilizer application method. Information about the p-index transport factors is added at the end of the spreadsheet here. Ultimately, you will see a p-index value that is given for each field under the specific planned scenario. In this case, the first field we have entered has a p-index score of 95, which requires a phosphorus balance rate. Additional fields can be planned as new rows in the spreadsheet. As you continue to plan these fields, you will see that some fields may end up in different categories of the phosphorus index. This will help to differentiate crop groups in the post grouping. Once you have entered all of the fields, field by field, into the p-index input sheet, there's a button in the upper right corner here called group p-index fields. By clicking that button, it will analyze all of the inputs and identify post groups that have similar management. This is an example of fields that will be post grouped because of similar management identified in the input sheet. Here we have a crop group called CG that includes fields 1A and 1C. Because of the p-index score, these fields must be managed under a phosphorus-based rate. We have information about the soil test levels, the crop to be grown, the crop yield, nutrient removals by the crop, soil test recommendations, starter fertilizer inputs, residual manure histories, carryover legume nitrogen, the manure group to be used, and its application management. The next sheet in the spreadsheet is the nutrient balance sheet summary. This will not be populated until you click the Create Update Nutrient Balance Summary. By clicking on this button, information needed for the summary sheet will be transferred over. Remember, if you make changes after clicking this the first time, you must click it again for the changes to be updated. Here we see that our crop groups from option 1 and 2 have been added to the balance sheet summary. At the bottom of this sheet, the post grouping from option 3 will be added. There is also nutrient balance summary notes. Note that after the, the p-index fields that have been post grouped, field notes for each field will be added together into a single crop group. Additional information that will be printed out with balance sheets submitted for review includes the manure group info printout, where information about the manure groups used in the balance sheets is listed, and the crop and manure management printed sheets here. The first tab is options 1 and 2 nutrient balance sheets. Notice that these balance sheets are given for multiple groups of fields that have been created under the crop grouping that's allowed in option 1 and 2. The next tab are nutrient balance sheet printouts for fields that were planned under option 3, p-index fields. Note that these printouts have fields planned on an individual basis. This allows reviewers to identify and verify that option 3 fields have been planned individually. The next tab is a printout of the p-index score. Again, notice that each field has been planned individually 
with the p-index and you can evaluate all of the transport factors and source factor scores as well as the final p-index value. Additional tabs in the spreadsheet include a winter application matrix printout if winter applications are planned and a maps cover page. The nutrient balance sheets can be printed out on this tab using the print NBS report button. By clicking this button, a dialog box pops up where you can select which sheets to print out. Once you've selected the sheets to be printed out, a print preview window will appear. You can either print this to your printer or you can print it to an Adobe PDF. Scrolling through here, you see the nutrient balance sheet summary table, which includes the post grouped P index fields. This summary table is significantly shorter than it would have been otherwise if we had not done post grouping of the P index fields. The summary notes table is also significantly shorter because P index fields have been grouped together. Thanks for taking the time to watch this informational video about the new, new version 5 nutrient balance spreadsheet. We hope that the new addition of post grouping for option 3 balance sheets will make for balance sheet summary tables that are easier for farmers to follow while still maintaining the field by field planning process that is necessary for the P index. If you run into any problems using the spreadsheet and need assistance, we welcome you to reach out to one of the members of the Nutrient Management Education Program at Penn State Extension.